This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Space Go! <laughs> From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. So, DC Comics has announced that a new line of comics will reboot many of the old Hanna-Barbera characters, including a comic featuring all the old HB action stars. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I thought we could talk, you know, you could go on for every 20 episodes about Hanna-Barbera overall. Yes. So we're just talking about the action stars in a very short period here, mostly in the mid-60s. Okay. Okay. But Hanna-Barbera was actually formed in 1957. Originally, Hanna and Barbera partnered on Tom and Jerry theatrical cartoons back in the 40s. Mm -hmm. And basically created limited animation, making cartoons created specifically for TV financially feasible. Yeah, they weren't as complex. You wouldn't see all the action that you saw on the big screen. Yeah, they'd set it up so they could move like just parts of a character's body and the rest of it wouldn't move. And the background would stay static. Or it would or go in a, like a, a scroll, yes. <laughs> as mm-hmm. it were. And they concentrated on funny animals at first, and then moved into animated sitcoms like Flintstones and the Jetsons. Mm-hmm. When the Adam West Batman series hit, it was clear there was a pent-up desire for action and adventure shows and mm-hmm. superhero shows. Now, Filmation had DC Comics sewn up, right? and Hannah Marbera would pursue Marvel to some extent. They did a Fantastic Four title, which is probably one of the worst ca- ca- cartoons ever. But it made far more sense to create their own heroes, because mm-hmm. there's no licensing costs. Yes. They own them outright. Yep. Now, they'd already had success with Johnny Quest Quest. in 1964. This was an attempt originally to license the radio show Jack Armstrong All-American Boy, but it fell through, Mm -hmm. so at the last minute, they tweaked the concept into Johnny Quest. Okay. 11-year-old Johnny goes around the world with his father, Benton, bodyguard race, bodyguard, bodyguard, (laughs) and friend Haji and dog Bandit, fighting evil. Mm Mm-hmm. There were 26 episodes originally aired in prime time. I did not know yeah, that they were prime time. I believe ABC prime time, and then wow. moved to syndication and Saturday morning. And that's where I saw them Saturday morning, yes. Right. And there were multiple extensions and reboots in the 80s and the 90s. And then there was the Harvey Birdman episode where we learned that Benton and Race were. <laughs> Harvey Birdman, yeah, attorney were, were, at law. Were partners. Yes. <laughs> And the current Venture Brothers uh, cartoon series is a takeoff on Johnny Quest, apparently. I've actually not watched Venture Brothers. Mm-hmm. I should probably watch it at some point. But the big push came in 66 and 67, mm-hmm. starting with Space Ghost and Dino Boy. Not Space Ghost Coast to Coast. No. That came later. <laughs> right. Classic artist Alex Toth, who had a long run at DC Comics in the, Gil- in the uh, Golden Age, was brought in to create many Hanna-Barbera characters. And Space Ghost was kind of like Batman in space. Mm-hmm. <laughs> His teenage companions, Jan and Jace, never explain how that happened, get captured by Criminal of the Week. But nobody needs to know how that happens. <laughs> no. Space Ghost comes to save them. He's caught in a death That's... trap. Then he uses his power bands to do whatever is needed to save the day. Uh-huh. He can also fly and become invisible, hence the ghost moniker. Okay. And they also have pet space monkey Blip. You had, always had to have an animal in there somewhere. There were only 20 original episodes, and this happened on a lot of cartoons because kids don't notice, and so they'd only make like one season of it and just rerun it over and over and over and over and over. And kids kind of like to see the same things over and over again. Now, they also got an additional 22 episodes as part of a series called Space Stars in 81 and 82. Then, as you mentioned, Space Ghost got a new lease on life on Adult Swim's Space Ghost Coast to Coast. A bizarre talk show using old footage with new voice work. <laughs> Zorak, well, these were all his old villains, villains. Were, was his band leader. Moltar was his director. And Brack was, well, Brack. Brack. <laughs> <laughs> his original run included episodes, uh, in the original 60s run, included episodes of Dino Boy, where a kid escapes a crashing plane, finding himself in the Lost Valley, where it's still prehistoric times. That was a pretty... Uh rampant kind of phase there with people finding themselves in ancient 
yeah. dinosaur time. Land of the Lost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the original uh, uh, run on, in again, 60s television, it ended where there was a saga where all the villains got together. So mm-hmm. it was like six episodes. It was like this big saga. And those featured crossovers with other Hanna-Barbera heroes we'll discuss in a minute. Next was Frankenstein Jr. and the Impossibles. I have no recollection of this show. This is more cartoony than the other HB action stars. It's another show with only 20 episodes. Frankenstein Jr. is a giant robot controlled by Buzz Conroy, a scientist's son who built the robot. Controlled with a ring, and of course they fight crime. Basically Johnny Sacco and his flying robot. (laughs) The Impossibles is a Beatles-esque band and also superheroes. Okay. Multi Man could crank out copies of himself. Now, has that been moved over into DC Comics or something now? Because wasn't there a Multi Man? Uh, or do they call him something else? I think they call him something else. Okay. But it's the same concept. Mm-hmm. Coil Man could become a human spring, and mm-hmm. Fluid Man could change into oh. uh, fluid. Okay. <laughs> was it any fluid? Like, could he be water or. No, it was always like some it greenish some fluid. Some kind of generic fluid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they would sing a song after fighting crime. <laughs> Somehow this show, and not the other action shows, got complaints about violence on kids' TV. <laughs> and later, the Super Globetrotters, which was a knockoff of the Harlem Globetrotters, would later copy the Impossible's powers. <laughs> <sighs> Birdman and the Galaxy Trio, another 20-episode run. Birdman's a regular guy given powers by the sun god Ra. Was he a lawyer? No, not at that point. Okay. <laughs> it was all off-screen, never explained. Flight... Power beams from his hands, solar shield, unfortunately needed the sun to charge up, which is foes constantly used against him. Mm-hmm. Got his orders from Falcon 7, a tuxedoed guy with an eye patch. His, his pet Falcon Avenger and later sidekick Bird Boy saved him a lot. Mm-hmm. And he always would say, Birdman! <laughs> like Space Ghost, Birdman got a second life on Adult Swim in Harvey Birdman Attorney at Law. Yes action detective show with reused footage and new voices. Harvey works at 7 and 7 for Phil Ken 7, (laughs) Falcon 7, defending other Hanna-Barbera stars in court with his old enemies as judges. (laughs) And the best episodes of that, Scooby and Shaggy brought in for drug possession, Flintstones as a Sopranos parody, the the Unaboo-Boo, <laughs> and the Jetsons suing the past for global warming. Yeah. There was also the Galaxy Trio, which was basically an adult version of DC's Legion of Superheroes. Vapor Man, who could turn into or create gases. Mm-hmm. Meteor Man could grow in size and gain superhuman strength. Did he get his powers from a meteor? Is that why he was called? Never. None of this is ever explained. It's just he has okay. his powers. Because he's from a planet where they do that. Okay, but... <laughs> and he could actually, like, I'll just grow one arm, and that arm will have super strength. <laughs> and uh, okay. And Gravity Girl could control gravity and fly. Mm-hmm. Then we have the Herculoids. <laughs> Basically, the concept of overwhelming firepower in a prehistoric context. 18 original episodes, then 11 more in 1981 as part of that Space Star series. Mm-hmm. They appeared to be alien savages fighting local and galactic bad guys, but understood modern concepts. Think space Luddites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I would call them. Xandor, the leader. Terra, his wife. Dorno, their son. Plus five creatures. Zok, a flying dragon who could shoot energy beams from his eyes and tail. Igu, a huge space ape made of rock. Tundro, a hybrid rhinos triceratops that could shoot energy rocks from his horn. <sighs> and Gloop and Gleep, two balls of protoplasm that can absorb attacks and protect the others. Mm-hmm. Basically, as a group, they were ridiculously powerful and would win every time. <laughs> and then they made a cameo in Space Ghost's final original saga on his show. Uh-huh. Shazam! Not Shazam. 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 This got a 36-episode run. Wow. Yeah. They were short episodes, though. Modern siblings Chuck and Nancy find a broken ring, and when they put it together, they're transported to the time of the Arabian Nights and meet Shazan, a basically un- omnipotent genie. Almost it, omnipotent. Because he can't send them back to yes. modern times. 
Because apparently they have to find the person whose ring it was, and he can send them back, which never happens during the series. Okay. <laughs> the kids get in trouble. The genie sa saves them. Lather, rinse, repeat. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they have a magic flying camel named Kabooby. Hmm. <laughs> and they also got a cameo in Space Ghost Original Series Saga. <laughs> Moby Dick and Mighty Mitor. Despite the billing, Mitor was the star. There were 36 Mitor episodes and 18 Moby Dick episodes. Was Moby Dick a whale? Uh, yes. Okay. Mitor is Captain Marvel meets He-Man. Okay. Teenage Caveman Tor is given a magic club and turns into a prehistoric superhero mm -hmm. with flight, strength, and energy bolts from the club. Okay. You had Village Chief Pondo, his daughter Shira her younger daughter, Little Rock, and winged pet dinosaur, Tog, are along for the ride. There's always a winged pet dinosaur. Pretty much. And then Moby Dick. <laughs> there's no Ahab, there's no Pequod here, none of that. <laughs> Tom and Tub, these two boys, are saved by the classic literary whale, and they fight crime. <laughs> and there's a pet seal, Scooby, and they all get a cameo in Space Ghost Final Saga. <laughs> oh goodness now i was thinking about this last night and i thought you know they really could go farther with this concept of taking old literary characters you know it'd be like you know little women where they can shrink into tiny size and <laughs> fight crime <laughs> okay i think that that's enough well i, I don't think we're going to talk about it anymore i think that in the meantime everybody should check out our audio podcast how i got my wife to read comics on itunes or on our website sfpodcastnetwork.com. <laughs> From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs>